How did the black fluid turn Wickers into an alien prawn? Why did the transformation start with his left arm? What interesting details can we find in the protagonist's new anatomy? I'll answer these questions and more about Neil Blomkamp's sci-fi film District 9 in this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Enjoy! Multinational United or MNU is a military company that entered a long-term contract with the government of the Republic of South Africa. The goal of the contract is controlling the integration of aliens into human society. The need for this comes from a huge alien mothership, which arrived 20 years ago and has been hovering over Johannesburg ever since. The alien society is built like a hive, and it just so happened that all of the aliens from that mothership are bottom-tier workers. They're quite socially inert, which on the one on one hand makes them easier to control, but on the other doesn't. Riots and public disturbance in Johannesburg led to the rise of xenophobia, and humans were not fond of the aliens to begin with. Also, they were called prawns because of their appearance. They look like a mix of insects and crustaceans. They have a sturdy chitin shell which serves as their exoskeleton, and they shed it a few times as they mature. Wickers won't have to go through this, though. One day, Wickers van der Merve is put in charge of a prawn relocation program. The aliens must be moved from District 9 into a new settlement, 124 miles or 200 kilometers away from the city. Of course, he's put in this position only because of his professionalism. The fact that he's the boss's son-in-law has nothing to do with it. Anyway, in the episode where alien signatures for relocation are collected, we get to see their way of life. They catch and eat some critters alive, roleplay as rebels using weapons they got from buttering with a local gang, even though they have their own weapons which are way more powerful, they go nuts for cat food, they produce offspring by self-fertilization, but at the same time they don't mind having sexual relationships with people. They lay eggs and feed them by connecting special tubes to rotting cow corpses. Maybe decaying protein particles that their offspring get from the tubes are enough to keep them alive. Still, all of it is nothing compared to what was happening at the same time in the shelter of the smartest of the prawns, the one who adopted a human name and called himself Christopher Johnson. Those events would change Wickers van der Merve's fate forever. For 20 odd years, Christopher has been looking for remnants of his people's technology and gathering precious biofuel one drop at a time. One day it would help him come back home and save his folk. Bureaucratic impunity allows Wickers to barge into Christopher's home and confiscate the vial with the precious liquid as evidence. However, Wickers neglects following basic safety rules and the liquid comes into contact with his body. Nausea and sickness are not signs of turning into a huge alien prawn, unlike the weird black fluid that's spreading throughout his body. When your fingernails fall off because of it, it's time for concern and maybe even time to see a doctor. The symptoms resemble radiation poisoning, which destroys the body from within. Maybe he was subjected to an extreme version of it when he came into contact with alien technology. Wickers, however, is not too worried, but later at a party to celebrate his promotion he throws up black liquid and faints. So he has no other choice but to seek help now. The liquid in his stomach also resembles the prawn's digestive ferments. One of them threw up next to the relocation team after drinking some industrial liquid. A few hours later, Wickers wakes up in a hospital ward to a doctor removing bandages from his injured left arm. The doctor tells Wickers that his arm is severely infected and started festering. But Wickers turns from scared to terrified as he sees that his arm and hand turned into a limb of an alien prawn. The movie doesn't explicitly tell us why Wickers started turning into an alien, but we know that their technology, which obviously includes the black fluid, is based on using their own DNA. As an unsurprised Christopher tells, or rather clicks, to Wickers, only that liquid could cause changes in Wickers' body. That means changing another body's DNA is a known side effect of the liquid's insane efficiency. Drops of this substance can not only fuel the transportation module, but help the whole mothership come to life. In the dialogues, Christopher promises Wickers that one day he will heal him with the same liquid. But there's too little left for that now, so he promises to come back in three years and bring more of it. So the prawns use this liquid as a medicine, and what's interesting is that it first manifested itself in Wickers' body as a healing agent. It restored his left arm, which he injured in a fight with Christopher's assistant, even though the arm turned into an alien limb during the restoration process. Still, it's a functional limb. 
Probably the liquid is somewhat sentient, so we decided that the best way to heal Wickers is to turn him into a more advanced organism, the DNA of which it had already contained. Prawns are stronger and more resilient than humans after all. Remember when Wickers tried to chop his new arm off? He only managed to chop off one finger, but this finger grew back in almost no time. His left eye went through a unique change as well, probably because during signature collection Christopher's son tossed a piece of candy at Wickers and hurt his eye. However, the eye changed a bit later. Anyway, Wickers ends up in the lab where everyone, including his father-in-law, treats him as company property and test subject. We see a close-up of his arm, and his forearm is still covered in human skin. Interestingly, it doesn't look like it's about to fall off, even though the chitin shell of a prawn can already be seen through it. The doctors discover several more places in his body that undergo active transformation, and say that during their research they will not put Wickers under. They drill into his new arm as is in order to check how his new arm integrated itself into his body. In this scene we can see an X-ray of Wickers's new arm. Interestingly, his skeleton has not yet undergone drastic changes. There's still human anatomy inside his alien claw. So what we see here is not a full override of human DNA by an alien one, but a hybrid of those two. At the final stage of his metamorphosis, Wickers' skeleton is not exactly human, but not fully alien as well. At the very least, we can notice the changes in his pelvis and the elongation of his limbs. And when you execs deem the human-alien hybrid a success and expect to earn a huge profit and make a breakthrough in the use of alien warfare. After all, alien weapons can only be activated by their DNA. There were so many things the menu did behind the scenes to achieve this. We can see some horrific alien-human hybrids, which are likely non-viable. Looks like the researchers even tried to attach body parts of one species to another. Because his father-in-law allows his colleagues to basically dismember the poor guy. No one cares about his comfort, so when he refuses to be put under, the doctor says that they'll just get down to business without anesthesia, no biggie. But Wickers's left arm helps him break free. It's stronger than a human arm after all. The next stage of the transformation comes about 40 hours since the moment of infection. Wickers develops a craving for cat food, just like the prawns. Or maybe he was just starving. What's scarier is that his teeth become rudimentary, and in the evening a horrified Wickers takes off his shirt and sees kiting-covered areas in his body. The left part of his back now also resembles a shell. His transformation, including the changes in his left eye, speeds up dramatically as he connects to the armor's neural interface. In just a few moments the chitin layer on his body becomes significantly thicker. Maybe this happens as his body tries to offset the damage it got when controlling the robot, when Wickers's head was drilled into. Before trying to dismember him, MNU's execs concluded that the mutation should go slower. They didn't believe that he'd fully turn into a prawn, so that may be why no one bothered to look for him among the other prawns. But at the end of the film we can see that Wickers turned into a prawn, and as he tinkers with some stuff, we can easily recognize him, as his right eye is still more or less human. Anyway, District 9 is not an alien immigration. It is a story of a man who lost his human appearance but gained humanity instead. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, leave a comment down below and share this video with your friends. Bye!